Oh ladies and gentlemen, this will be interesting because today Wargaming released an article titled American Yo Tanks Are Here. And indeed, those tanks, the entire branch is going to be available on the main live server tomorrow. Do you know what that means guys? I think this is the first time ever they have released the entire branch of vehicles to the main live server without letting the player base test them on either the sandbox server or on the public test server or have a missed something guys have I missed something? I think this is the first time ever. Yes, uh, they have not let us test some premium tanks, but uh, I'm not talking about that. I'm actually talking about extra vehicles. So let's take a look. Several months ago, we announced a new line of American heavy, tank fe heavy tanks featuring the new reserve track mechanic. We have been able to test it out on the premium tank, M4 Yo, uh, M4 Y tank. Uh, basically, long story short, you have a little tiny tracks on both sides. If your main tracks gets destroyed, but your reserve tracks are still up, you can still keep moving like EBRs, you know, hitting the wheels just makes them slower. With this unique new mechanic, it took a long time to refine the Yo vehicles and balance their characteristics without asking what the player base, um, of course, uh, thinks about that. Now, now we are ready to add this entire heavy tank branch to the game on January 26th. So tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, mark your current calendar, stay tuned, because I am going to make videos uh, with um, featuring those new tanks as soon as they come out. But before we take a closer look at the lineup, let's start with a brief history uh, background. Well, you can uh, read about this. Uh, actually, you know, uh, the good thing about this uh, is that those vehicles were actually, you know, in real life uh, being developed or the reserve track feature was actually a thing. It is not the made up uh, uh, feature by Wargaming. Uh, here are the pictures about the vehicles. Um, I have to say those look very, very menacing. De definitely, uh, especially the tier 10 one. I don't know. Dude, this uh, turret armor is absolutely crazy. Uh, looking at the armor, for example, 356, you know, nominal armor value. Where exactly it is? Well, we are going to uh, see and take a look at that as well. But, uh, you know, to get a bit better, better picture of what uh, this uh, uh, thing is going to be, let's actually watch this video together for the first time and, uh, you know, this gives us a nice overview and at the same time we are able to add our commentary to it, so let's go. The release of a new line always sparks interest. And oh, yes. players are most interested in lines with new mechanics. The Yo tanks are a perfect example of that. American Yo tanks. I, I think they have never released. You should be able to recognize before, right? classic features of U.S. tank building in them. Every project, though, attempted to bring fresh design solutions. Like a narrow turret. A peculiar gun mantlet. <laughs> or suspension with an extra track. Oh boy. This will be quite even though intriguing. no metal prototypes of these vehicles were ever built, there were enough drafts and blueprints to create a new American heavy line in the game possessing these unique mechanics. Basically, our tracks are laying down, yeah. The line begins at tier 6 with the Pollack tank. So it's I the hope only you have a lot of experience a in your track. tier 5 tanks. But you can hardly call it a typical heavy. The Pollack is sturdier than the M6 and faster than the Sherman. Wow. The only drawback is so its more armor and faster. Its DPM is not great. Its accuracy mediocre. Its depression angle only 5 degrees. And its single shot damage is standard for a 90 millimeter gun. But this tank is a decent close range fighter. Its armor can forgive certain mistakes in a positional firefight. In combination with good mobility, it even allows you to engage in a flank offensive. In this regard, the Pollack tank is more successful than other same tier vehicles. Yeah, as every new tank should be, right? To At tier 7, increase there is the, the M2Y, the first vehicle of this line possessing a reserve track. In other respects, this tank is similar to its predecessor. 
a cross between a heavy and a medium vehicle with good mobility and excellent armor. Yeah. The, the only meta weak spot of continues. the M2Y in a positional fight may be the commander's cupola. The gun's accuracy and DPM don't show any incredible numbers, but the penetration is quite good, even against Tier 8 vehicles. What's more, all Yo tanks starting at Tier 7 have excellent elevation and depression angles. This is one of the key characteristics that shapes the gameplay of the entire line. All right. The M3Y settled down at tier 8. It made So those are the final characteristics basically what they came up with uh, internally and uh, using the super des information as well. And here we can see the 90 mm gun uh, rifled 240 alpha damage, 223 penetration in tier 8, minus 10 degrees of counter operation, 6.4 second reload time. Aiming time is aiming time and accuracy are, you know, quite meh, but 2250 dpm. Uh, not bad for the tier 8 heavy tank, comparing it to like many, 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 many other uh, tier 8 heavy tanks with bigger alpha damage, it is a lot better actually. Uh, you can see the armor values are oof. On every single new tank, like, armor rails are crazy. Mobility, uh, 40, you know, nothing special. Mobility is actually nothing special. But, of course, we're going to play with it and uh, we get a leap a in lot firepower picture. arranged for oh, by works. his predecessors. <laughs> its hull and turret armor thickness reach impressive values. And the size of the commander's... Wow, so this is massive upper plate, you can see. High to lower plate and GG, right? In tier 8. Commander Hatch is the only weak spot. Cupola has been noticeably yeah. reduced. At the same time, the mobility of the tank stays true to the brand of the Yo branch and is complemented by the new mechanic. The tank has one more peculiar feature. Two top guns to choose from, adding to the diversity of gameplay. <laughs> if you prefer okay. to keep your distance and support your allies, consider the 90mm gun with high DPM. It resembles a classic medium tank gun. Accurate, fast firing, and with high penetration. Accurate? What? Penetration. If you are a melee it's fighter, the then the 105mm gun is the one for you. It's slight. Okay, 320, 208, so a lot less penetration. 8.9 second reload time, 0 0.39 accuracy. Slightly inferior to the 90mm in terms of accuracy and time. rate okay. of fire but it deals impressive single-shot damage. The M3Y is a comfortable heavy tank with gameplay similar to that of the T-32 and M103. I see, I see. Now, let's talk about the big boys. The ugly... The M6Y mobiles. is your final push to the crown mm. of the branch. This... 320 with uh, at least one gun. Maybe it has uh, a couple options as well. 251 penetration, 8.3 seconds, 2 second aiming time, you know, accuracy and all those things are a lot better now. TPM 2300, armor values once again quite high, I guess, uh, for the upper plate and the turret. Turret is so weird, dude. Uh, this has a uh, better board weight ratio, same as top speed. 390 view range. So 390 view range is comfortable uh, position. Basically, you can get away with uh, the ventilation and without using coated optics. This vehicle keeps the general Depends concept the of Yo tanks, of but takes on a different appearance. The elongated turret looks especially impressive, and it has good armor and a shape prone to ricochet. The M6Y Wait, is also let's go back the for M6 a second. Okay, so 190 lower plate, okay, crazy upper plate, depends on the angles once again, but look at his thing, you have to hit Commander Hedge, only chance, or toes, side ports over there, but if you see those things, basically I, I think face hugging is the only way how you have to hit those if you can't see the Commander Hedges, but if you already see those, you see Commander Hedges as well. The M6Y is also armed with two top guns to choose from, only this time their calibers are even greater. The 105mm cannon boasts good accuracy and high damage per minute. Yeah. 
you want me to be gun now? It's 120 millimeter sister is so 400 243 11.4 second reload time i guess the remove penetration is uh, 300 close to it 2.5 second aiming time accuracy you know gun handling is quite bad with the b guns and tpm lower as well but i think this is going to be the main gun used anyway Pretty it's sure. less accurate but compensates for that because uh, you do not need to be so crazy accurate uh, with uh, uh, those tanks, if uh, those are going to be very aggressive, you know, frontline warriors. At with nice single shot damage. The M6Y will help you better understand how to play the king of this line. Let's talk about the king. I give you the M5Y. This vehicle, oh which rightfully God. sits at the top of this line, uses the most effective and recognizable recognizable ideas so this is one of the gun options i guess once again 360 268 high dpm gun 2650 two second aiming time 0 0.35 accuracy uh minus 10 degrees and 18 degrees right uh, 178 uh, frontal upper plate i guess the turret 356 those i guess those are going to be weak spots plus the commander hatch uh, better mobility, 400 meter view range, so easily can get away with ventilation and without coated optics. Ooh. Ideas of the previous <laughs> Yo the tanks, well. but takes them even further. The M5Y is much smaller in size. Its turret is narrower, and instead of two vulnerable... <sighs> Cupolas. Only one remains. Okay, so one cupola. This, those eyes, ladies and gentlemen, seem to be green, so maybe weak spots, right? But look at that. It, it is an actual face. This is an actual face. 350 turret. So imagine this tank completely held down. So those um, <clears throat> parts over here, 260 millimeters, 255 I like how it is uh, colored green, 255 penetration, lower plate, 200 plus guys, upper plate, 260 plus, 255, 260, wow. Double cupolas, only they one remains, rounds will be and fired it's a small one. <laughs> Looks familiar, right? There are several vehicles with a similar turret model in the game. You can't underestimate such a design. Especially if you keep in mind the comfortable gun depression angle. Just like the majority of the Yo tanks, the M5Y has two guns in its inventory. Oh, yeah. Choose the gun the same way as you would with the Tier 8 and Tier 9 tanks. The fast-firing 105mm gun delivers good accuracy. Its standard shells are APCR rounds, bounce, bounce, which have bounce. excellent penetration and high velocity. Just what you need to fight mobile opponents. The 120 millimeter gun is a heavy vehicle's tool. High single shot damage. Re so 440, yes, this is what I was looking for. 440, 252 penetration, 11 second reload time. You can get it under 10 seconds uh, if you boost it to the max, right? Uh, then minus 10, 2.5 seconds. Accuracy is uh, quite bad, but 2.4 kdpm still. Okay. Reasonable accuracy and AP shells with. And you know, guys, we have not been able to test those tanks out. That's weird. Good velocity. The gun is suitable for effective shooting at both close and medium range. At the same time, the turret armor will keep your hit points intact. The main feature of the Yo Branch tanks, starting from Tier 7, lies in their chassis. I'm talking about the reserve track mechanics. Yeah. Here's how it works. If one of your tracks is busted, the tank will keep moving with the help of the reserve one, but at a lower speed. If the other main track is knocked off as well, the tank will slow down even more, but it will still be able to move. <laughs> For example, the M5Y is driving at its maximum speed of 40 kilometers per hour. If someone hits its front roller and destroys the main track, the tank will slow down by 40%. If both tracks are damaged, the speed will drop by 65% of the maximum but you're still moving, which means you can still get to cover or rotate your hull. 
crazy, right? To completely immobilize a Yo, enemies need to knock off at least one reserve track. Then the tank will stop for repairs. So you have to hit the reserve the track will be repaired rear. first, and then the main one. Tracks. The reserve track takes less time to repair, and as soon as it's fixed, you can start moving. However, there's a catch. If you're driving faster than 5 kilometers per hour, the main track will take longer to repair. Okay. You need to think about where and when to repair your tracks so that you won't be caught. If there's a cover nearby, good. Go there and recoup. If you're caught in an open area, it's better to use a repair kit, which will repair all the tracks at once. There are several ways to stop a yo. You just need to know which shells to fire and where to aim. For instance, firing HE shells mm -hmm. at the rear of the chassis is more likely to completely immobilize a furious yo. Artillery HE rounds work in a similar fashion. If a shell lands next to the vehicle, the scattered shards can damage both tracks at the same time. You can also immobilize the American with an accurate shot at the front roller. In this case, the shell has to be powerful enough to damage both modules at once. When playing a Yo okay. tank, keep a few simple rules in mind to avoid getting in trouble. The reserve track is not a reason to scrimp on the repair kit. Yes, the mechanic can forgive you some mistakes, but in a critical situation, you need to think about survival. Try mounting improved hardening. It increases the durability of both the regular track and the reserve track, while making it harder to knock off both with one shot. Untrackable beast, right? When engaging the enemy head-on, consider how your tank is positioned. If you are facing the enemy directly, their accurate shot at your front roller is more likely to knock off the reserve track as well. To avoid this, change the angle of your hull or use the terrain folds. This way, you'll protect yourself and will be able to keep moving even if one of your main tracks is oh, damaged. Yeah, yeah. Frontal, it will be annoying tank to when side scraping, tanks. move as much as you can and try to position your hull at an acute angle. Don't make it any easier for the opponent to hit your reserve track. But once again, guys, don't overthink the dragging feature. The Just play the game are as well. unique, but practical. They feature the familiar gameplay of American heavies, but with a unique twist. They make you look at familiar things from a different angle. They can be forgiving. And most importantly, they prove the unshakable truth by deed. Moving is living. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Imagine those tanks on the reach line, completely hull down. You know, any regular tank you can completely knock out over there, keep them perma track, but not this one. You know, not this one. If you can't see the uh, reserve tracks at all, oof, don't even try to hit the tracks. Don't even try to waste it because, uh, waste your shot because just deal damage in those situations. <clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen, yo, tanks coming. We're able to test them out on the live server where, you know, I, gu I guess they simply were tired of uh, changing uh, uh, the vehicles according to the public test, right? So here it is. Uh, here is the article as well. If you want to read more about those uh, vehicles, please too. But tomorrow, those are actually in the game as well. So be prepared. Stay tuned. I'm going to play with, I, I guess I'm going uh, straight after the tier 10 one as well, so you can at, at, least, at least see or get an idea what they are thinking about doing with, uh, not thinking, sorry. I'm so used to actually uh, thinking about testing those tanks out first before they come out, but so you can get an idea what they did with that line. Uh, showing you tier 10 action. So, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for tuning in. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below. I catch you next time. Stay awesome, stay sexy, take care, and bye. Oof.